Just do something. For God's sake, do something. Biden has long pressed for a weapons ban, successfully negotiating a 10-year ban as a senator in 1994, and he continues to make efforts toward that goal. Let's take a look at five guns you may be saying goodbye to as soon as 2023. Number 5. The Beret M82 One weapon system not only revolutionized the field of military sniping, but also created an entire new category of weapon systems. Using an existing large-caliber bullet and adapting it to the precision rifle platform, the innovative Barrett M82 sniper practically created the category of large-caliber rifles that equip military snipers worldwide to this day. In 1982, Ronnie Barrett was a professional photographer taking photos of a military patrol boat on Tennessee's Stones River. The patrol boat was armed with two M250 caliber machine gun mounts. Barrett was intrigued by the guns and wondered if a rifle could be designed to fire the 50 BMG bullet. With no firearms design experience or training, Barrett hand drew a design for a 50 caliber rifle. Barrett drew the rifle in three dimensions to show how it should function and then took his design to local machinists. Nobody was interested in helping him, believing that if a 50 caliber rifle was useful, someone would have developed one by then. Barrett finally found one sympathetic machinist, Bob Mitchell, and the two set to work. Less than four months later, they had a prototype rifle. The Barrett M82 was 57 inches long, had a 29-inch barrel, and weighed 28.44 pounds. The M82 delivered previously unheard levels of energy and distance in a sniper rifle. The M3350 BMG bullet weighed 661 grains, or 1.5 ounces, compared to the 55 grains of 556mm ammunition used in M16-type rifles. The M33 round had a velocity of 2,750 feet per second at the muzzle and delivered an amazing 11,169 foot-pounds of energy, compared to just 1,330 foot-pounds for the 556 round. The Barrett round was so powerful, it still retained 1,300 foot-pounds of energy after traveling 2,000 yards downrange. At a distance of 1.4 miles, the M33 round still packs 1,000 foot-pounds of energy, more than three times the power of a 9mm pistol bullet. The Barrett M82A1 M33 combination could also hit at very long ranges. While the M16 series of rifles had a maximum effective range of approximately 600 yards, the Barrett can reach out to 1,500 yards or more, and the company warns new owners that stray bullets can travel up to 5 miles. Properly trained shooters can push the round out to 2,000 yards or more, but must contend with a considerable amount of bullet drop due to the effect of gravity on a slowing bullet. The utility of this rifle, which as Ronnie Barrett once pointed out can disable a multi-million dollar jet on the ground with a $2 bullet, has been repeatedly proven over numerous conflicts. Today, the Barrett M82A1 is used by more than 60 countries, mostly NATO countries and US allies in Asia and the Middle East. All the major military powers field their own 12.7mm 50 caliber class sniper rifles with Russia's OSV-96 rifle serving with the Russian ground forces and China's Zhejiang M99 serving with the People's Liberation Army. The Barrett M82A1, the rifle nobody wanted to build, ended up starting a revolution. But it's understandable why the government wouldn't want you to own one of these. Number 4. The Calico Liberty The Calico submachine guns are somewhat mysterious and quite notorious in both design, concept, and appearance. The key properties of Calico firearms were extremely comprehensive magazine capacity combined with slim profile and ambidextrous handling. First designs, introduced by the US-based company Calico Light Weapon Systems circa 1990, were intended for both law enforcement and military markets, and a lighter version for the civilian market. Sales of these guns were not so bright, and the US Assault Weapons Ban of 1994, which limited magazine capacity for civilian guns to 10 rounds, further impacted the future of this weapon. Apparently, military and police sales during late 1990s were insufficient, and it seems that the Calico LWS company went out of business. Original design of the Helical Big Magazine was invented by the Michael Miller and Warren Stockton by the 1985 and refined by the 1988. Calico Company produced two basic designs, one in 22 lr models 100, 105, and 110, and another in 9mm Luger, models 900, 950, 960, Liberty. 9mm models could be easily distinguished by the ejection chute located just ahead of the trigger guard and open to the bottom. 22 lr models, on the other hand, have trigger guards with slim front edge and ejection ports on the side of receivers. The Calico M950 has a subtle but long history in the world of cinema and video games. 
Its most notable appearances would most likely be in the 1997 movie Tomorrow Never Dies, Total Recall 1990, and Robocop 2 and 3 1990 and 1993, with variation appearing often and across the board of cinema, games, and anime. Most consider it to be an ugly firearm, although some contest that it is a beautifully designed piece. Number 3. The Street Sweeper Born on the dusty streets of African Revolution as the Armzell Striker, the shotgun called the Street Sweeper found its way to the U.S. market through some fairly sketchy people involved in espionage, drug dealing, and tax evasion. The Armzell Striker was a 12-gauge, 12-round revolving cylinder shotgun developed by Hilton Walker in what was then Rhodesia in 1980. Unlike traditional revolvers which rotate their cylinder mechanically as the trigger is pulled, the striker's drum rotates after the trigger is released. As the trigger resets, a tension spring in the cylinder housing is briefly allowed to rotate the cylinder to its next position. The tension spring has to be manually tightened via a key on the front of the cylinder housing. Walker moved to South Africa and took his gun design with him, which was eventually adopted by the South African and Israeli police. In the United States, the gun was produced by Cobre and called the Street Sweeper, made and marketed from 1989 to 1994 with slogans like, It's a jungle out there, there is a disease and we've got the cure, and Make your streets safe and clean with the help of the Street Sweeper. Cobre also manufactured the Mac-10 and Mac-11 heavy pistols. The ATF declared the Striker and Street Sweeper destructive devices in 1994 due to a lack of sporting purpose. Number 2. The Tommy Gun the history of the Thompson submachine gun is the story of a tumultuous period in American history marked by Prohibition, the Great Depression, two world wars, and violence. Originally developed by John Thompson as a lightweight yet destructive rifle to be used by American soldiers, the Tommy gun was invented in 1918, too late for mass distribution during World War I, and wasn't officially adopted by the U.S. Army until World War II. Very quickly, however, the gun that was built for the battlefield turned loose on the American streets and became popular with gangsters, bank robbers, strike busters, and others who appreciated its compact size and ability to spray hundreds of bullets in a matter of seconds. Attempts to limit distribution of such a powerful weapon to law enforcement and military personnel were stymied and, in some cases, opposed by groups who supported the right to bear arms. Number 1. The TNW M2HB the M2 heavy gun or Browning 50 caliber heavy gun is a gun that was designed towards the end of World War I by John Browning. Its design is similar to Browning's earlier M1919 Browning heavy gun, which was chambered for the 3006 cartridge. The M2 uses Browning's larger and more powerful 50 BMG 12.7 mm cartridge. The design has had many designations. The official U.S. military designation for the current infantry type is Browning M-Gun Cal 50 M2 HB Flexible. It is effective against infantry, unarmored or lightly armored vehicles and boats, light fortifications, and low-flying aircraft. The gun has been used extensively as a vehicle weapon and for aircraft armament by the U.S. since the 1930s. It was heavily used during World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, the Falklands War, the Soviet-Afghan War, the Gulf War, the Iraq War, and the war in Afghanistan. It is the primary heavy gun of NATO countries and has been used by many other countries as well. That's all for this video, folks. See you another time.